Hey everyone, welcome, it's Dr. Phil here with another health and happiness tip. And today's is all about a little hormone that not many people know about called oxytocin. Oxytocin first came to people's attention because of its really pivotal role in pregnancy. It starts the final stages of uh, pregnancy, the delivery stage. But although that's kind of where a lot of people's focus began on it, they discovered that actually it has a much bigger role in both men and women. It's called the love hormone or the bonding hormone, and it's incredibly good for your health, both physical and mental. So there are some things that we can do to improve and increase and enhance the amount of oxytocin in our body without having to get pregnant. Anything that connects us to somebody else will increase our, our oxytocin levels. So that can be talking to somebody, it can be walking with somebody, it can be singing with somebody. And the with somebody is really important. Oxytocin is increased when we do stuff together. It is actually increased as well by things like singing, just singing and dancing and happy things will help us to produce oxytocin and hugging, which of course tends to be a mutual activity involving somebody else. So hugging, connecting, touching people, and also eye contact. So actually looking into somebody's eyes will increase your oxytocin. So if you speak whilst making direct eye contact or hug, if you can hug whilst looking somebody's eyes or hold their hands, then that will increase oxytocin even more. And this is why things like walking together rather than just walking on your own increases your oxytocin. And oxytocin levels are really important for cardiovascular health, for gut health, and for mental health. So think about what can you do to increase your oxytocin levels? How can you connect? And this is going to be particularly important in the period I'm recording this. We're just coming out of lockdown from the pandemic where there's been a lot of people who have not connected. The interesting thing, of course, is that oxytocin is still increased when we connect on things like videos or Zoom or Twitter even, as long as it's a positive conversation, you'll get a degree of increase in oxytocin, not as strong as if you're directly with someone. So video will probably produce more, I don't know what the research is on this, but I'm guessing video will be more valuable because you'll get a bit of more of a sense of someone being there. So think about what can you do to increase your oxytocin? And of course, if you do that with somebody else, you'll be increasing their oxytocin too. So it's good for us, it's good for them. So let me know how you get on with that. Check in with your oxytocin levels. See you on the next one.